and now we will learn how to record paying vendors bills that were previously entered. When you make a bill payment, obviously that's a transaction, and any transaction that is a transaction will be recorded in the chart of accounts, in the general ledger, and the results will always immediately change the trial balance. And of course, at the moment you pay a specific vendor's bill, the vendor records will change at that moment, and as you remember, the report that we're using to reflect the vendor records is the vendor balance detail. So from that same bill payment, both the trial balance and the vendor balance detail will change. For example, let's imagine on February 1, we paid Con Edison $1,000 for bill number 6161, which happens to be unpaid from the previous video. Now we wrote check number one and I promise we will learn more about checks in the next video. But for now, assume we wrote a handwritten check and we will not print checks here in this course. You can learn about printing checks through QuickBooks using the video of the desktop version which you can watch after the accounts payable section of this course. Well, what will happen in the trial balance at the moment we pay $1,000 to Con Edison? Well, accounts payable goes down because we now owe less money to vendors, and accounts payable will become 12285 And of course, because we paid from cash and bank, cash and bank will go down by 1000 and cash and bank will become 22320 so those are the numbers we expect in the trial balance after we do our first bill payment. In order to pay bills, we go to the plus sign and we choose pay bills under the vendor column. Now let me fit this into the screen nicely. Now when you first go to the pay bills window, you get every single unpaid bill regardless. It's a lot easier to filter by the specific payee, by the specific vendor whom you're paying. So I will filter by Con Edison and click Apply, and notice only Con Edison's bills show up here in the pay bills window. It's also reminding me of my cash balance before the payment, so if I pay $1,000, it'll go down by exactly $1,000. Now the date I have as February 1, and starting check number, do not click this checkbox. We are not printing checks here. You can watch the lesson of printing checks from the desktop version video. It's the same idea. But here is bill number 6161. And if you, if you click on it, you can go back to it and read the description, the memo, or anything else. But I'm going to close it out. So, ooh, well, we lost our pay bills window, so we'll go back to pay bills. And we'll filter again by uh, the payee, Con Edison. Apply. So now it's bill number 6161. So we're going to check this bill. And if you make a check mark in the box, QuickBooks assumes you're paying the entire amount of the bill, which in this case we are. Of course, I lost the date. I have to, you know, if you, if you leave the window, you have to reset the date sometimes. So we're paying. Con Edison $1,000 for this bill on February 1 with check number 1. If we agree everything, we click, instead of clicking save and print, we should really click save and close. Okay, once it's closed, we can go back to the reports, we can take a look at the trial balance, and we can see the numbers are exactly as what we expected, 22320 uh, 22320 What about account payable? Account payable 12285 And we predicted account payable would be 12285 Very good. Now where else do we have to check the results? Well, what about the vendor records? Specifically, let's check the vendor balance detail and see what it looks like. So if we click Reports, and we come down to vendor balance detail. 
you can see that Con Edison now only has one unpaid bill left over because the other unpaid bill 6161 has disappeared because it is no longer owed. Now in order to fully understand this, let's do a second example. Let's imagine on February 2, we paid $550 to Rex Repair Shop for bill number 7575. We paid with check number 2. Now what will happen in the trial balance? Well, accounts payable will go down by 550 because we owe less, and it will become 11735 Cash and bank will also decrease by 550 because we're paying from cash and bank, and that will become 21720 So let's go ahead and pay it like we did the last one. We can click the plus sign, go to the vendor column, and click pay bills. Now again, we have to move the date back to February 2, and of course this is check number 2, I was playing with the computer, you know, on break, so it suggested for me number three, but you should put number two. And again, you should always filter it by the payee so that you can only see Rex Repairs bills after you click Apply. Now it's nice and clear, and you only see the bills for that particular vendor. Now here's bill number 7575. Now, be careful because if you click the check mark into the box on the left of the bill, QuickBooks will assume the payment amount is the entire bill. In this case, we're not paying the entire bill, so we have to do an extra step. We have to highlight the bill payment, type in just the money amount that we're paying, and then push the tab key to save the field. Now we click Save and Close. And if we look at the reports for vendors right now, you will see that it makes sense. We'll open the vendor balance detail. Now when we look at Rex Repair, bill number 7575 is still on the vendor balance detail because it's unpaid. So you see the original amount was 2050, but the open balance is down to 1500 for that particular bill. Now let's check the trial balance and see if the numbers are exactly what we expected. Cash and bank has decreased to 21,770, and that's what we expected, cash and bank, 21,770. What about account payable? Account payable, 11,735. We predicted accounts payable would be 11,735. So we checked our vendor records and we checked our trial balance and the results are exactly what we expected. For a full explanation of anything related to bill payments, view the desktop videos, specifically about applying bill payments to vendors and fixing mis misapplied payments. You can watch them on this very website. In fact, I also have videos about printing checks from QuickBooks as well as other vendor related uh, transactions uh, and advanced vendor situations such as terms, credits, refunds, and so on. Any of those desktop videos will also relate to the QuickBooks Online.